We'll uh, now hear from Richard Dolan for 10 minutes. Thank you, uh, distinguished members of the committee. And uh, let me just say it's been an honor for me personally to be here with you all week, uh, to be able to, to give statements to you and to, and to chat with some of you privately as well. Um, <clears throat> regarding disclosure, I, I have often felt that disclosure on the matter of UFOs and ETs, possible extraterrestrials, is a paradox. It's impossible, but it is inevitable. It's impossible because there is no political motivation for it. It's inevitable, however, because our leaders are not the only factor in this equation. There are other beings, after all. But mainly, I would say there is us, um, the people, who are going through this greatest uh, social, cultural, and especially technological transformation in the history of humanity. In fact, I would say that we are the game changers. Someday, and it won't be too long in the future, something is going to force someone's hand. It could be a major sighting, it could be a major leak, something. Something that can no longer be denied. After all, we are fast approaching what experts in artificial intelligence call the singularity when computing intelligence exceeds our own. In such a future, I ask you, can we really think we will still be stuck in neutral on this issue? Something will force the president's hand. He or she will finally hold that long-awaited press conference and make that bombshell statement. It might go something like this. I have been advised by the National Security Council and heads of our intelligence community that there is a reality to some of the UFO phenomenon in that some UFOs are real physical craft not manufactured by any known civilization on Earth, or words to that effect. It's the kind of statement that many proponents of UFO disclosure would like to hear, but the real question is, what next? Because there would be quite a few follow-up questions. At the top of the list will be questions about who these other beings are and what their agenda or agendas might be. And this will be a very difficult question for any president to answer. In the first place, there is a likelihood that even the leaders of the black budget or breakaway society that have been on top of this for years, they may not even know, or at least not fully. And what if they do know? And moreover, what if at least some of that answer includes information that might be upsetting? Divining the intentions of non-human visitors or permanent residents, whatever they may be, might not be the easiest thing to do. But it's entirely possible, judging from the data we do have, that some of them may not care very much about humanity. Some may, some may not. And what if an agenda has been determined within the intelligence community and this agenda includes something to do with alleged abduction phenomena? And even if that isn't true, does any president honestly believe he or she can contain rampant speculation along these lines? And even if the intentions of these other beings are said to be neutral or positive, there will clearly be tremendous suspicion by large swaths of humanity. This will not be an easy sell. There will already be a sizable number of people predisposed to interpreting these other beings as nothing less than demonic, short of bringing one of these entities to a podium and subjecting it to hours and days and weeks of questions by an insatiable public, it's very likely that any moment of disclosure will not satisfy the public the way it would like to be regarding alien motivations. That's only the beginning of the problems. One early and obvious question that will arise, one which will have deep, profound political implications, will be very simple. How have you managed to keep this secret all these years? Consider that our entire society has been told that UFOs do not represent anything truly anomalous, that ETs or aliens are definitely not here on Earth interacting with us, that UFO believers may be well-meaning but had been mistaken about all of that. This has been a mindset embedded within all of our major institutions. Our educational institutions from primary school through universities and postdoctoral levels. Throughout our major news organizations in which an open belief in UFOs is a third rail for one's career. Throughout our scientific establishment for sure and also throughout our political structure. 
political careers have been destroyed or at least severely undermined by the UFO taint. Remember what happened to Dennis Kucinich in 2008 after it became known that many years before he had seen a UFO. Never mind the fact that the two witnesses he had been with came out and corroborated the sighting. They saw the same thing. All of these institutions and others have treated the UFO topic as nothing more than a joke, something suitable for immature minds. Can it really be that the professors throughout the United States uniformly have dismissed this phenomenon without any cooperation from the intelligence community? Ditto the world of science, politics, and media. Well, no. Not when the most modest amount of research shows strong intelligence community influence over all of these institutions. In other words, people will see very clearly that the national security apparatus has created a global culture that has suffocated the truth. Researchers will begin to investigate in a serious way just how these relationships have undermined the credibility of all those institutions and undermined our apprehension of truth. The result will be a major cultural and institutional house cleaning, but it won't stop there. Citizens will naturally want to know specifics about the structure of secrecy itself. That is, they will want to know. If the U.S. president has been out of the loop all these years, as it seems, then who exactly has been in the loop? Who has been running the UFO cover-up? With due respect to Stephen Bassett, that's the phrase that I do use. If the answer is anything along the lines of my own research so far, it will show that the cover-up has long ago gravitated away from formal presidential authority into international and private hands. It's not that the U.S. president is a non-player in all of this, but rather is more like the public face of the true power elite that stands behind. We all, I think, have come to understand this when it comes to power in general, and this will likely be the case when we begin a sophisticated analysis of UFO secrecy. In other words, the moment of disclosure will trigger an intellectual revolution worldwide relating to the true structure of power on planet Earth. It will be a moment in which the world sees and acknowledges that the emperor has been wearing nothing at all. The political fallout will be tremendous and a great battle will develop within the first year of disclosure. Think of it this way, just because the president has been forced into making an announcement doesn't mean that the CIA and all the other intelligence groups that have been managing this will simply walk away. There has been a concerted effort spanning an entire human lifetime to control this topic. A great deal has been invested and mere disclosure is not going to change that. The real issue in the immediate post-disclosure world will be who controls the spin on the story. Because right away there will be a great divide, a chasm. Once this topic is available for open discussion, you can be sure that people around the world will be demanding answers. You can be just as sure that on the other side of the fence, information will be handed out as sparingly as possible. Government spin doctors will be out in great numbers trying to control the situation according to national security policy, although this time independent UFO searchers may get a public hearing that they hadn't gotten before. If the official spokespersons are making misleading or false statements, it's going to be a bit easier post-disclosure for independent researchers to point this out, because this time the world will be much more likely to listen. And there will be many, many more investigators into this topic after disclosure than there are today. How all that will turn out, only time will tell. There are so many other messy issues relating to global finance, energy, truth commissions, lawsuits, cultural transformations, cultural wars, religious and spiritual changes, scientific paradigm shifts, and ultimately, geopolitical changes that will allow us to meet the challenge of, shall we call them others, here on planet Earth in some sort of coordinated, hopefully logical manner, and even more hopefully in some way that answers to the people rather than a handful of elite human players. And for that, we will need a groundswell of public pressure from below and tremendous political energy, ethics, and courage 
to take on the black budget culture that has dominated this subject for so long and to begin a long, hard fight to reclaim some measure of freedom and dignity for humanity while we begin a new, better, and more mature phase of our existence. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dolan. Now we'll...